Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now in this video we're going to look at a new group of trig identities which we call the half angle identities or the half angle formulas. Now they look like this. Sine of u over 2 is plus or minus the square root of 1 plus, or sorry, 1 minus cosine u over 2. Cosine of u over 2 is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine u all over 2 and tangent of u over 2 is 1 minus cosine u over sine u or sine u over 1 plus cosine u. Now these formulas are very intimately related with what we talked about in the last video, our formulas for lowering powers. So remember we had a formula sine squared of x is equal to 1 minus cosine 2x all over 2. Now let's just say that I made the substitution that x is equal to u over 2. We would see here that this becomes sine squared of u over 2 is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2x, but now x is u over 2, and 2 times u over 2 is just u all over 2. And now taking the square root of both sides, we see that sine squared of, sorry, sine, taking the square root of both sides, we see that sine of u over 2 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine u over 2. And there we have it. There's our half angle formula for sine. Now we can do this exact same process for cosine of u over 2 we take our uh, lowering power formula cosine squared of x is equal to 1 plus cosine of 2x over 2 and we're going to make the same substitution here x equals u over 2 so we'll get cosine squared of u over 2 is 1 plus cosine of u over 2 we take the square root of both sides and we get our half angle formula for cosine now it's very important for these first two formulas that we keep in mind where this plus and minus is coming from. When we think plus or minus for half angle, what we should be thinking is which quadrant is u over 2 in? So u over 2 is in quadrant what? Right? We're really looking at the left hand side and determining is sine of u over 2 positive or is sine of u over 2 negative? Whatever the question or whatever the answer of that question is, that's going to be our plus or minus sign on the right hand side here. Now you notice tangent doesn't have a plus or minus sign. Let's take a look at tangent and if you remember we did a previous problem where we actually already proved that this is an identity. We proved that these two expressions, these trigonometric expressions are equal to each other. This was when we first started proving trig identities um, so you should have that in your notes or if you don't this is probably a good exercise for you to try. I'm only going to show one of these and then you can uh, on your own make sure you can prove that these two sides actually equal each other for any value of u. So let's take a look at the lowering power formula for tangent. Tangent squared of x is equal to 1 minus cosine 2x over 1 plus cosine 2x. Now let's go ahead and play with this a little bit. I'm going to make the same substitution uh, x equals u over 2. So we have tangent squared of u over 2 is equal to 1 minus cosine of u over 1 plus cosine of u. Now really if we wanted to we could take the square root of both sides, put a plus or minus in front of there and we could have a half angle formula for tangent. But we don't want to stop here. We want to get it to the simplest form it can and that's what we have up here. We don't want to have a square root if we don't have to. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the conjugate expression of my denominator. Where the conjugate expression of 1 plus cosine of u is 1 minus cosine of u. So I need to multiply the top and bottom by 1 minus cosine of u because remember we can only multiply by 1 in this way without changing the value of what's on the left hand side. So multiplying through now on my numerator I'm going to have 1 minus cosine u quantity squared 
And in my denominator, I'm multiplying these conjugates, and we know one plus cosine times one minus cosine is one squared minus cosine squared of u. Now we should recognize this denominator by now. I'm going to leave this numerator alone. This is one minus cosine u squared. And in my denominator, I have a Pythagorean identity, don't I? We know one minus cosine squared u is the same as sine squared of u. And now we can take the square root of both sides. This is tangent squared, so tangent of u over two is equal to one minus cosine u over sine u. And just so we don't have to worry that we don't have a plus or minus sign, let's take a look at what happens here. One minus cosine u is always positive. 100% of the time, one minus cosine u is positive. If cosine u is negative, I have one minus a negative number, which is just a positive number. If it's positive, it's always going to be less than or equal to one. Now if it's less than one, then we have one minus a smaller number, so it's still positive. If it's equal to one, I'll get zero. And actually, we don't need to worry about it there. Because if we have a u that's equal to zero, or some increment of two pi, that will give us cosine is one, so one minus one will give us zero on the top. But sine of u is going to be zero. So this is gonna be zero over zero. Now zero over zero gets a little bit tricky, and you'll learn more about this in calculus. But when that happens, if we look over here, we know this is also equal to sine u over one plus cosine u and sine of zero over one plus cosine zero is zero over two, which we have no problem seeing, it's just zero. Any time that this, this side is defined, we're going to have a positive value in the numerator. Now let's look at when sine of u is negative. Sine of u is negative in quadrants three and four. Now if u is in quadrant three, then one half of u is going to be in quadrant two. It'll be in quadrant two somewhere closer to pi over two. It's gonna be somewhere between pi over two and three pi over four, uh, u over two is, uh, if u is in quadrant three. Now if u is in quadrant four, that's the other place sine is negative, well then one half of u is going to be somewhere in quadrant two between three pi over four and pi. In both of those cases, every time we have a sine that's negative, we have a tangent of u over two that's also negative. So we don't need any plus or minus signs here. The plus and minus here is going to be determined by sine being positive or negative. So it's already built into this formula. Okay, so that's how we derive these formulas out. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of examples. Find sine of 15 degrees. Now we've already done a problem similar to this. We used our subtraction formula, right? We could find sine of 15 degrees by looking at sine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees and use our subtraction formula for sine. But let's go ahead and try using our half angle formula here instead. So sine of 15 degrees, I can write this as sine of 30 degrees over two. Now this is my u, this 30 degrees is my u, but 15 degrees is in quadrant one, so I know I'm gonna have a positive answer. So it's going to be positive square root of one minus cosine of u, right? 30 over two is u over two, so u is 30 degrees, and this is all over two. So this is equal to the square root one minus cosine of 30 degrees is square root of three over two. We have this all over two. Getting rid of this fraction up in the numerator, I get a common denominator. This is gonna be one, or sorry, two over two minus root three over two all over two. That pushes that two down to the bottom and I get two minus the square root of three over four. Now continuing on here, I can simplify this just a little bit more. I have a four in the denominator, and remember from pre-calculus one, the square root of a quotient is the quotient of the square roots. So I can look at this as the square root of two minus root three on the top, and on the bottom, I have the square root of four, which is two. 
Okay, so we could also write this as 1 half squared of 2 minus root 3, uh, but this form is absolutely fine. So this is sine of 15 degrees. Let's take a look at another example, another kind of commonly worded problem. Find sine of x over 2, cosine of x over 2, and tangent of x over 2, given that sine of x is 3 fifths and x is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. Now we need this information. It's very important that we know that x is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees and not just that x is in quadrant 1. The reason is, if we just know x is in quadrant 1, well let's say x is 45 degrees. Then x over 2 is going to be 22 and a half degrees, so I'm in quadrant 1, so I know exactly what my signs are. But what if we had an x like 380 degrees? If I had an x that was 380 degrees, then x over 2 would be 190 degrees and I'd be in quadrant 3. Tangent would be unaffected, but all of a sudden I'd have a negative cosine and sine where between 0 and 90 I had a positive cosine and sine. So in these problems we can't just base our solutions necessarily off of the quadrant, but we actually need to know in what range the degree measure falls so that we know in what range x over 2 falls. Right? So in this case I know that x over 2, I can just divide this entire inequality by 2, x over 2 falls between 0 degrees and 45 degrees. This gives me exactly the information I need. So I know that sine, cosine, and tangent are all going to be positive here. Now we could have kind of inferred this out a little bit. Um, we know that if it's in quadrant 1, then one half of it's going to be in either quadrant 1 or quadrant 3, but uh, we have a positive sign. Just to be safe, uh, you'll usually be given this information, so you don't have to make these kind of inferences on your own. Now I have sine of x. Uh, I need to find sine of x over 2, cosine x over 2, and tangent x over 2. So the piece of information that I'm missing that's necessary for all of these is of course cosine of x. All of our half angle formulas include cosine and not sine. So to find cosine from sine, I could use the Pythagorean identities, but instead I'm just going to set up a quick little triangle here. My sine is 3 fifths, so that's my opposite over hypotenuse, which means my adjacent is 4, and thus cosine of x is equal to 4 fifths. Alright, so now we're ready to solve these out. Sine of x over 2 is equal to the positive, because we know x over 2 is between 0 and 45 degrees, positive square root of 1 minus cosine of x, which we found to be 4 fifths, all over 2 in the square root. 1 minus 4 fifths is 1 fifth, so we have 1 fifth on the top over 2. We can mush those denominators together, we get the square root of 1 over 10, which we can write as 1 over square root of 10. Again, the root of the quotient is the quotient of the roots, so the square root of 1 is just 1, and rationalizing this gives us square root of 10 over 10. Cosine of x over 2, we can plug into the half angle formula. This is going to be positive again, because our x over 2 is between 0 and 45 degrees. So we have 1 plus cosine of x, which we found to be 4 fifths, this is all over 2, which gives us the square root of 9 fifths on the top over 2. This becomes the square root of 9 tenths. Right? We're just dividing 9 fifths by 2, or multiplying by 1 half. Now I can take the quotient of the roots. The square root of 9 gives me a 3 on the top. I have a root 10 on the bottom, which is simply 3 root 10 over 10 after rationalizing that denominator. Now tangent of x over 2. Uh, we can go ahead and do this a couple of different ways actually. Let's go ahead and look at the formula. The formula is 1 minus cosine of x, which is 4 fifths, all over sine of x, which is given to us in this problem as 3 fifths. So that's going to be 1 fifth on top over 3 fifths on the bottom. Our denominators of 5 cancel and we get 1 third. Or we could have simply noted that 
we already have sine and cosine so tangent of x over 2 is sine and I'm going to go ahead and write this sine as the second to last step we had before we rationalize the denominator this is 1 over square root of 10 over and then again for cosine this step right before the last step 3 over square root of 10 and our square root of 10's cancel and we get simply one third. So either way you want to do it, uh, again if you ever have to find just tangent you'll usually find it faster to use the formula but if you've already found sine and cosine then no matter which formulas we're working with you can always just take the ratio of sine over cosine. Alright now in the next video we'll look at some uh, some new identities and we'll see you there.